Okay, good afternoon and welcome back everyone to our options education webinar series. This is part two of our beginners options master course. This is following up on our first session a few weeks ago. Today we're going to be talking about the difference between buying versus selling options. On the previous course or previous section of our course, we covered the basics of options trading. We covered the basics of what a call or a put contract is. Today, what we wanna do is take it one step further and really talk about the difference between buying versus selling an option. What the difference in terms of the risk profile is, why you wanna buy an option, why you wanna sell an option, and more importantly, I wanna talk about the nuances of what those strategies actually mean because a lot of options education simplify buying an option versus selling option into bullish or bearish categories. But I actually think that that does not do uh, the strategies enough justice. So I wanna try to break down each one of those four strategies, make sure you truly understand them because they are the fundamental building blocks of all option strategies that you will implement in your portfolio. Whether it's simple, single leg strategies, or for those of you that are executing multi-leg strategies, the fundamental building blocks are these four core strategies. So it's really important that we know the fundamentals before we jump into uh, trading specific strategies using these four strategies or building more complex strategies using these four strategies. So let's, let's go ahead and get started here. Before I do, just a quick disclaimer. What I'm going to discuss here today is purely for demonstration purposes. It is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any specific securities. Now, for those of you that are brand new to options play, I hope that you guys are able to leverage what the Montreal Exchange is providing free of charge to everyone, which is free access to the Options Play Canada platform, access to bi-weekly options educational webinars like the one that you are on right now, and access to a free on-demand video library to help you leverage everything that we've recorded previously for your own education. You can always go back, watch a previously recorded webinar, and use that as your guide or your learning experience. So let's go ahead and get started here. And you can sign up for all of this just using this link here, which I will post into the chat window. For those of you that are brand new, I highly recommend that you sign up. It is completely free of charge. So with that, today what we're going to do is we're going to cover a few different things. But like I said, we're going to predominantly cover the difference between buying versus selling options uh, so that you understand the core, at the core, what these strategies mean. And then what we'll do is we'll cover two predominant types of strategies, bullish strategies and bearish strategies. So we're actually gonna compare buying a call versus selling a put, and then on the bearish side, buying a put versus selling a call. It's really important that everyone understands the fundamental difference between these strategies. And in reality, buying a call and selling a put, even though we, we put them under the, under the bullish category, they're actually, in my opinion, not even remotely close to being uh, the same in terms of bullish strategies. So I wanna make sure everyone understands the difference. Same thing for buying puts versus selling calls. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a quick review of option Greeks. For those of you that are brand new to options trading, option Greeks are really important to give you an understanding as to what you're actually risking when you buy or sell an option. So Greeks give us a calculation and we're gonna go through them from a conceptual perspective and then show you as many examples as possible using options play. Now make sure you join us next week for our live market analysis with Q&A on March 30th. This is where we're gonna take everything we've learned in part one and part two. And what we're gonna do is we're not gonna do any more learning in part three. We're just going to do some live analysis. We're gonna do it at noon so the markets are still open. We can look at some trades together. Especially in this fast moving market, a lot of users have questions around how to implement the things that we're teaching. So we're gonna do this live market analysis and then provide a Q&A session so that you guys can ask any questions regarding what you've learned in part one and part two after we show you how to apply these things to the actual market. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's first talk about why should you trade options. And in order to understand why should you trade options, we need to first really understand what stock trading looks like and then compare it to options trading to give you a better understanding of these strategies. Now, when we talk about 
stock trading. This is truly where I call, uh, or what I consider having the ability to take tr a pure bullish or bearish view on an individual stock or ETF. Because when you buy or sell an individual stock, what you have is immediate exposure. So if the stock goes up after you buy it, you start making money immediately. If you short a stock and the stock starts moving lower, you start making money immediately. There's no, there's no um, uh, hurdle that you have to overcome. As long as the stock moves in the direction that you expect it to, even by a penny, you start to make money or lose money if it goes a penny in, in the direction opposite that you're expecting to. So this is what we call symmetrical exposure. It's very simple, I think, for most people to understand. And it's a strategy that allows you to trade on any time horizon, meaning you could buy a stock and hold on to it for a day, a month, a year, a decade, however long you, you want, you can hold on to that trade. The only limitation that you have when you're trading stocks is that you have no neutral options. Meaning if you think a stock is going to predominantly stay in the range that it's uh, currently in, and you're not sure it's gonna move substantially higher, substantially lower, then you may not want to trade that specific strategy. And I will say that for many equity traders, many stock traders, you may not, uh, ever, you may never use a strategy like shorting the stock. Some traders don't have a margin account. Some traders don't want to take on the risk of unlimited risk by shorting a stock. So there's plenty of, of investors that I would say that focus purely on just buying stock, meaning you're only seeking bullish opportunities. Now, that can be limiting, in, especially in a market like this, trying to find stocks that you think are going to move higher. So that's why we want to explore options that allow you to also take some bearish strategies. And that's why we're going to break down these four strategies and make sure you understand how to go about doing so. Now, before I move on to the options trading side, can everyone please bring up your chat window at the bottom of your screen? I just want to do a quick um, Poll here. How many of you are familiar with trading stocks? How many of you currently trade stocks? Please type yes into the chat window uh, if you currently trade stocks. Okay. Um, okay. Pretty much everyone here has trade stocks. How many of you are are have traded options? Please type one if you've traded options, and please type two if you've never traded options before. Okay, so I have a fair amount of ones, but I also have a significant amount of twos. So those of you that have never traded options, perfect. So let's talk a little bit about options trading. Now, right now, what we covered last week was that options give you the right to buy or sell an ET, a stock or ETF sometime before the expiration date at the agreed upon price, which is the strike price, and the, uh, and the right to buy or sell that stock or ETF is always initiated by the buyer. And we know that there's a call option and there's a put option. And you can, as, a, as an investor or a trader, either buy that call option or sell that call option or buy the put or sell the put. So you effectively have four possible combinations. Um, generally speaking, we covered this, how you can use the uh, plus or minus signs to quickly determine whether a strategy is bullish or bearish. So we remember that buying a call option is bullish, selling a put option is, is also bullish, buying a put is bearish, and selling a call is bearish. So today we're going to break down these four strategies. And the reason that I want to do it is because when we say buying a call option is bullish, in my opinion, that's not 100% accurate. It's somewhat accurate, but it's not 100% accurate. Same thing with selling a put. It's, I don't think it's fair to say selling a put is bullish. Even though that is the right environment to sell a put, selling a put in itself, in my opinion, is not truly a bullish strategy. Vice versa for buying a put, it's technically bearish, but it's not exactly 100% true. And I want to make sure everyone understands exactly what these strategies mean. So to do that, I'm going to first start off by talking about uh, buying a call option. So we're gonna start off by talking about buying a call option. This is a strategy that for those of you that are options traders, you're probably quite familiar with this strategy. For those of you that are brand new to options trading, I'm gonna break down this strategy and hopefully explain to you that when we talk about buying a call option, normally we call this a bullish strategy,
But I think a better definition for this is bullish by a certain amount. And I'm going to come back to why I mean it's bullish by a certain amount. So let's first start, start off by talking about stock XYZ. So this is a stock. It's a fictitious stock. It's currently trading at $100. And I think the stock is going to go higher, right? Pick any stock in the universe that you think is going to go higher and you can replace stock XYZ with it. And what can you do if you think the stock can go higher? What you can do is you can buy a call option. Whoops. You can buy a call option. Let's say in this particular case, I buy a 100 strike call option, which is the at the money call option. And let's say I pay $4 for this call option. Now, right off the bat, what this implies is I have a 25 to one leverage because I'm now controlling a $100 stock for just $4. So I'm implying about a 25 to one leverage. Now, what is the benefit of buying a call option versus just outright buying the stock? Now, if I bought 100 shares of this stock, first of all, my risk is $100 a share. Because if I buy a stock for $100 and this stock jumps, drops from $100 down to zero, then I've lost $100 a share. If I buy a call option for $4 a share, then the most I can risk here in this particular case is just $4. That's the first benefit of buying a call option is reducing risk, reducing the amount not only the amount of capital that it takes for you to control a $100 stock, instead of having spent $100, you're only spending $4, but also at the same time, you're only risking $4 a share. This is something we covered in part one. If you missed it, I highly recommend you to go back and watch that recording where we talked about the mechanics of how a call option is structured. But when you buy a call option, no matter what happens, even if the stock goes to zero, you're only risking $4 a share. On the upside, if the stock goes higher, your max reward is unlimited. Meaning if this stock goes from 100 to 110, 120, 130, 140, however high it goes, the, uh, the higher it goes, the more money you can make. And there's no limit as to how much money you can make. So you truly have unlimited max reward. So, so far, I think at this point, most beginners would say, well, sounds like I should always buy call options if I'm bullish on a stock. Why would I ever buy the stock? Why would I want to risk $100 a share when I can risk $4 a share and still capture that unlimited upside like I do if I buy the stock? And the answer is, it's because that not only do you have to be bullish on this particular stock, you have to be bullish by a certain amount. And that certain amount is dependent on how much you pay for that call option. Now, because I paid $4 for this call option, and this is again, something that we covered on our on our webinar last uh, in a couple of weeks ago is that when you buy a $100 call option for $4 in order to make money on this strategy not only does the stock need to go higher it needs to go higher by at least the $4 that you've paid for that call option or more in order to for you to break even that means if the stock goes up to 104 so you're bullish on the stock it goes up to 104 but guess what on this call option you actually you actually don't make any money. You make $0 if the stock goes higher by $4 because you paid $4 to get into this call option. So how do you make money buying a call option? The stock needs to go above 104. So it has to go to 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, something higher than 104 in order for you to break uh, in order for you to break even and start being profitable on this trade. Which means that in order to buy a call option not only do you have to ask yourself, am I bullish on stock XYZ? You have to also factor into how much does the call option cost and how much does the stock need to move in order for, it to, for me to make money? And then you can go back to the drawing board. You can ask yourself, do I think this stock is going to go from, one of, uh, from 100 to 106, 107, 108? If the answer is yes, then maybe you might, might consider buying that call option. If the answer is no, if you think the stock is only gonna go from 100 to maybe 103, then guess what? You should not buy a call option, even though you're bullish on this stock. Now, I wanna make sure everyone understands this before we move any further, because this is one of the most important lessons to learn with buying call options or buying any option. So please type three into the chat window if, they, if that makes sense to you. Because I've seen so many 
users who learn what a call option is, and usually what they do is they stop at these two steps. They know that they're risking $4 to make unlimited amounts of money. So they think, oh, I think the stock's gonna go up, so let me buy a call option. But guess what? A lot of times what happens is the stock goes in the direction you expect it to, but it doesn't move quite enough. And what happens is you lose money. And you say to yourself, well, how could I lose money? I'm bullish on this stock. The stock went higher, but I've lost money. And the answer is because a call option is not just bullish. It's not just a bullish strategy. It's bullish by a certain amount. And that certain amount is, is driven purely by the amount of money that that option cost. And this is something that you won't know ahead of time. So you have to actually go and look at what are, what are the call options on stock XYZ cost in order to even decide whether a buying a call option makes sense for you. Because if this particular, in this particular example, if the, if the cost of that call option is $4, then the break even price is 104, then you have to ask yourself, do I think the stock is going to be above 104 at expiration? And a lot of times, even if you think it's gonna to go to 105, that still might not be necessarily worth your while because for those of you that, are, that have traded options, if the stock ends up at 105 at expiration, how much money do you make on this particular trade? If anyone can answer that question, please type the answer into the chat window. If the stock goes up to 105 by expiration, how much money do you make on this particular trade? Great, Laura's the first person to answer that. He said one, $1, exactly. So if the stock goes up to 105, so you, you could have made $5 a share if you bought the stock, but if you bought the option, you actually only make $1 a share. It is different because you're making $5 a share while risking $100 a share. Here, you're making a dollar while only risking $4 a share. But those are, the, those are the decisions that you have to make to decide whether it makes sense to buy a call option, okay? So that's, that's why it's so important to remember that when we say buying a, a call option is bullish, it's not true, it's bullish by a certain amount, and that certain amount is driven off of how much does that call option cost. And we're gonna go through some examples to make this a little easier for you to understand. So now let's talk about the second bullish strategy, selling a put. Selling a put is what also is considered a bullish strategy. So again, I have stock XYZ trading at $100. I think the stock's gonna go higher. For anyone who's brand new to options trading, you might know that buying a call option is bullish, selling a put option is also bullish. So you might say, well, why don't I go ahead and sell a put option? The answer, no, not the answer. The, uh, when we refer to selling a put as bullish, in my opinion, that's not, again, also not true. Selling a put is what I would consider somewhat bullish, but not too much. And I'm gonna show you why. So as a put seller, if I think stock XYZ at $100 is gonna go higher, sure, selling a put option is a viable strategy for me to take. So let's look at what that looks like. So first of all, selling a $100 put, which is the same at the money put on stock XYZ, let's say I collect $4 by selling this put option. So unlike buying the put option where I have to pay, when I sell a put option, I get paid. So when I get paid $4 a share, for selling the $100 put. As a put seller, I have the obligation to now buy the stock at $100, no matter where the stock is trading sometime in the future. The only thing is that if the stock trades higher than a $100 a share, no one's gonna ask me to pay $100, a no one's gonna ask me to pay $100 a share for it when they can sell it somewhere else on the open market for a higher price. So if the stock is above $100, I just keep my $4 credit. But if the stock starts to decline, that's when someone's going to want me to pay that $100 a share because then they can go on the open market, buy it for $90 and sell it to me for $100, which is basically free money. And they just have to pay $4 up front for that option. So when I sell a put option, I have, yes, I do make money if the stock is above $100, but no matter how much above $100, the most I'll make is just $4. So even if the stock goes to 1,000, I'm only gonna make $4 a share. So that's where when I say selling a put option is somewhat bullish, but not too much. Because if I'm really bullish on stock XYZ, and I think the stock's going to go to uh, from 100 to 120, right? Maybe, maybe the market is bottomed and you think stocks are going to bounce higher. You think some, something's going to make a big move, right? So 
When you think something's going to make a big move, yes, you can sell a put option, but guess what? You're going to underperform. What you're better off is buying that call option that we just showed you in the previous slide. Because if you think a stock's really going to move, pay the four bucks. And if the stock goes up to 120, 130, 140, you can make more and more money. If you sell a put option, you'll, you'll make money, just not as much. Does that make sense to everyone here? Um, please type four into the chat window if that makes sense. So when you're buying, selling a put option, what you have is you have a little bit of a buffer to the downside because you're collecting $4 in premium. So even if the stock, even though you're bullish on the stock and you think it's going to go higher, but what, let's say you're wrong and the stock moves lower by a little bit, like 98, 97, um, you're still going to actually make money. This is one of the only strategies in the world where you can be wrong on the direction completely and still make some money. In this particular case, if the stock goes down to $96 or $97, you still make a dollar on this particular trade. So you, you got the direction completely wrong, but you still make money. Now, how much buffer do you have? Guess what? It depends on how much the put option is giving you in terms of credit. The larger the credit, the larger the buffer you get. So in the current markets that we're trading in, where things are very volatile, you're going to get paid a lot, a, a much higher credit, and you're going to get a much larger buffer when you sell that put option. So when you sell a put, your break even is at the strike price minus the credit that you receive, which is the buffer that you get, and your max gain is if you're at the strike price or higher. The only downside is that if the stock moves significantly higher from your strike price, you're not going to make any more money. You're just going to be limited to the $4 credit that you receive. So that's why when we say selling a put is somewhat bullish, but not too much, it's because if you really think the stock is going to really take off, you're better off buying a call option, not selling a put. So there's a distinct difference between selling a put and buying a, uh, I'm sorry, buying a call versus selling a, a, a put. Uh, selling a, a, buying a call is really for when you expect a big move to the upside, you're better off buying a call. But if you think the stock is going to be somewhat bullish, but not too much, or even perhaps a little bit bearish, that's when you want to buy, that's when you want to sell that put option. Okay. So those are the two, two bullish strategies. Now, when we switch over to the bearish strategies, they're really basically just going to be a mirror image of what we just discussed. So buying a put option, just like the call option, is just the exact opposite. I have stock XYZ trading at $100. I think the stock's going to move lower. Maybe there's a lot of stocks in the current market that you think are going to continue moving lower. So what can you do? You can buy a put option. But just like the previous slide, when I say buying a put option is bearish, that, again, in my opinion, is not a 100% accurate description. A much accurate description is that it's bearish by a certain amount. So an example to do this is, let's say I'm bearish on stock, stock XYZ, so I buy a $100 put option. Let's say that put option currently on the open market is, is costing me $4 to pay for it. So just like the call option, I'm, I'm getting 25 times leverage on my capital because I'm controlling a $100 stock for just $4. And I, my max risk here, just like buying the call option, is just a $4. No matter what happens, even if the stock goes to 1000 meaning I completely get the direction wrong, I'm only risking $4 a share. If you shorted a stock at $100 a share and the stock went up to 1000 how much do you lose? You actually lose $900 a share. So trying to make $100 a share, you lose $900 a share. Obviously, that's a very extreme example, but... You know, I knew a lot of people who tried to short Tesla stock at 400, 500, and saw the stock reach, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars in a very short amount of time. And there was a lot of pain that people took. So that's why, whenever you have a bearish view on a stock, I always advocate try taking, try using a put option rather than shorting the stock. And your max reward on shorting a stock is unlimited all the way down to zero because there is a limit as to how far down a stock can go. It can't go below zero. Um, but you have unlimited gains all the way down to zero. And your break-even price here, just like the call option, is $4 below the strike price of your uh, put option. So in this particular case, when we say bearish by a certain amount, that certain amount is dictated by how much you pay for that put option. In this particular case, $4. So not only do I have to believe this stock is moving lower, I have to believe that it's going to be below $96 or more. And the 
So there's two ways that you can make money buying put options. Either you believe the stock is going to make a big move to the downside, or perhaps there are some options that are cheaper than others. So let's say this option, instead of costing you $4, costs you $2. Now your break-even price is just $98. So that's why it's so important when you're trading options to look at how expensive are options because the cheaper the option is, the less the stock needs to move. So whenever you're buying an option, you ideally wanna buy an option that's as cheap as possible. When you're selling an option, the opposite of, of buying, you wanna, you, wanna, you wanna sell an option that's ex, as expensive as possible. Now, I just wanna make sure everyone understands that before we move on to call options. So please type five into the chat window if buying, if buying put options makes sense to you. Okay, perfect. So lastly, selling calls, which again is the exact opposite of selling a put option. There is one distinct difference here. When you, buy, when you sell a put here, so this is a stock XYZ. I also believe this stock is going to move lower. Selling a put option is one strategy that you can take, but again, selling a put option, normally considered a bearish strategy, but I again wanna clarify, what that means is that it's a somewhat bearish, but not by too much. Because when you sell a put op, when you sell a call option, let's say in this particular case, I sell a $100 call option and I collect the $4 from the person who bought the call option. What this gives me is truly unlimited max risk. So this is the only option strategy that gives you truly unlimited uh, max risk. Because if you sell a naked call, and the stock keeps going higher and higher and higher, you have a similar risk profile to someone who sold a, uh, sold, uh, sold a stock short. The only difference is that you get a little bit of a buffer, and that buffer is the credit that you receive on the particular trade. So normally a short stock position would look like this, but you have a $4 buffer on top on that someone who's shorting a stock. So if you ever think about shorting a stock, you might wanna consider selling a call option instead because at least you'll be $4 better per share than the person who just outright shorted that stock. So your break even here is at 104 because you received $4 in income on selling this call option. So you are bearish on this particular trade. However, again, if you're super bearish on a specific stock and you think the stock might go down to 90, 85, 87, and again, maybe in this particular market, there are plenty of stocks that you think are going to continue moving lower. Guess what? Yes, you can sell a put option and collect $4, but you're probably better off buying a put option, which will give you substantially more higher gains if the stock does move substantially lower. So it's really important to differentiate between do I think the stock's gonna make a big move to the downside or do I think it's gonna move a little bit to the downside? And these are the strategies that you might wanna take depending on what your views are in the market. So it's really important to make that distinction. So just to recap before we move on, when you're thinking about a stock XYZ, whether you think the stock is gonna move higher or you think the stock's gonna move lower, that's gonna first determine whether you wanna look at bullish or bearish strategies then you have to look at how much do calls and puts cost because that's going to help you inform well how if i'm going to buy a call option how much does the stock need to move in order for me to be profitable if i'm going to sell an option how much buffer do i get so this is really where for those of you that are experienced in trading we're going to talk about in the next slide a little bit about call and put pricing because the pricing of the call or put will heavily influence whether you might want to take one of these strategies that we just discussed. So there's a few different things that we need to think about when we're thinking about the, the, the cost of a call or put option. First of all, first and foremost, what you wanna think about is the time to expiration. So what I have up here are options for the Bank of Montreal, which are currently trading, let's see. Let's see where the Bank of Montreal is currently trading at. Bank of Montreal closed at 56.24 today. So what I'm looking at here are the $56 options expiring in April and in May. So those are the two options I'm taking a look at, uh, April and May. So if you look at April options for the $56 call, so the at the money call, they're trading at around a little over $5. So the April expiration is roughly 
30 days away. It's a little less than 30 days away. It's like 20, uh, let's see. April is 25 days away and the Mays are 53 days away. So one is basically double the other one, okay? So let's go back to our slides. So the Aprils are 25 days from expiration and the Mays are 53 days from expiration. So one of the things that you want to consider is that if you are bullish on stock XYZ, on, on, on BMO, in this particular case, trading at $56, right? So you either believe this stock is going to move higher or lower, you have to first look at, well, how much do the options cost? So the 25-day option, you're looking at a little over $5. The 53-day option, roughly just around $6. So what that means is that if you're thinking about buying a call option on BMO, this stock needs to move $5 higher or five, roughly $5 lower uh, for you to either buy a, a um, call option or you can also sell a put option. But let's first just talk about the bullish strategy here for one second. Let's say you think BMO is going to make a big move to the upside, right? So you have basically 25 days for the stock to move up to about 30 bucks roughly. Whoops. So you have, whoops. So the stock has to move up to about 30 bucks in the next 25 days. Sorry, not $30. Sorry, guys. Um, what I meant is the stock needs to move up to, up to roughly $61 in 25 days, or you have the option for the stock to move to about $62 in 53 days. Those are your two options. So you can ask yourself, do I think the stock's going to go up to 61 in 25 days? Maybe that's a little too much. But then you can ask yourself, do I think the stock's going to move up to 62 in 53 days? So really what you have to look at is how much time do you have to expiration? Are the options cheap or expensive? Now, given the current market volatility, I don't think there are any options that are cheap. Pretty much everything is pretty expensive. But you'll notice that, you know, from a probability-based perspective, what do you think has a higher chance of happening? The stock moving uh, roughly five bucks in 25 days or six bucks in 53 days? From a probability-based perspective, you're certainly much better off having a $6 move in double the amount of time than a $5 move in just roughly three weeks time. So you'll generally find that the longer dated options will provide a slightly lower what we called implied volatility. So this is another topic that we're gonna get into in the next few weeks is to really think about how do we actually determine whether a call option is cheap or expensive because that really informs us as to whether we wanna buy or sell a specific call option. So I just want to make sure everyone understands this and I'm trying to provide some, some realistic examples so that people can start thinking about options in these types of formats because that's how you want to start thinking about options, not just as another vehicle to take a bullish or bearish view. It heavily depends on what that call or put costs to influence your decision. So if that makes sense, everyone, please type six into the chat window. Um, Roland's asking a really good question and Roland, I'm going to come back to your question at the end when we talk about, um, uh, when we start answering some questions, but I will come back to you Roland here. So now that we've talked about, you know, buying a call, selling a call, buying a put, selling a put, I, I think that the, the question on most beginners minds or most options traders is, you know, if I buy a call option and, and I get that move that I'm expecting for, that I'm expecting the stock to happen, well, how much money do I make, right? Because if, if I buy a $100 stock and it goes up to 110, I know exactly how much money I can make. If I buy a call option and the stock goes up to 110, how much do I make? That's the, that's, or, or vice versa. If the stock goes down to $90, how much do I risk? And these are really good questions to ask. And it's really important that you know the answer to those questions before you get into a trade. Because unfortunately, I see a lot of beginners buy an option without truly understanding the, the, the potential risks and rewards so that they're not really actually leveraging these correctly. So it's important that we think about the impact of the directional move on our 
option pricing. So first of all, what I want to show you guys is Delta. Delta tells us the change in the option price with respect to a change in the underlying stock price. So when you're looking at a call option or a put option or any option, you will every option has what we call a delta. And delta tells us the sensitivity of the option price based on changes in the stock price. So if the stock goes higher, or if it goes lower, it tells us how much our option price will go up by or down by. Now, so an option with a delta of 0.5 means that if the stock moves up or down by a dollar, I should expect my option to move roughly by half as much or 50 cents. So in this particular example, let's say BMO is currently trading at $60 and I buy a two month $60 call option on BMO and that option costs me, let's say $5, similar to the example I just showed you before, a call option costs roughly $5. And in this particular case, the stock goes from $60 to $61. So the stock moves a little bit higher in the direction that I expected to. So I want to know how much money do I make on this particular on this particular trade. So what I do is I take the $1 move that the stock in this particular case moved $1. I multiply it by 0 0.5, which is the delta of my call option. And what that tells me is that I would make 50 cents on my option or about a 10% gain on my underlying stock. Now, it's important to understand that when you think about Greeks, what we're assuming is that everything else stays constant, meaning time stays constant, volatility stays constant, everything under, that we can imagine stays constant. But in reality, the world doesn't stay constant, right? Because first of all, the stock moves from $60 to $61. It takes time for that to happen. Volatility changes when it moves from $60 to $61. So when we talk about the Greeks, we're talking about you know, trying to price an option in a vacuum. And I know that that may not be realistic, but that's the best that we can do is give you a sense that in a vacuum, if all other things are held constant, what should you expect the value of an option? But in reality, there are lots of things that influence the value of an option. But the delta is by far the thing that has the greatest influence on your uh, the value of your option. That's why we cover this first, okay? But the second most important factor of your option price is what we call theta or the impact of time. So the value of an option actually erodes as you approach expiration. So this is something that works for the seller because a seller of an option wants the value of that option to erode to zero and the buyer of an option does not want that. So theta works in the favor of a seller, does not work in the favor of a buyer. And this is part of the reason why many professionals lean towards the side of selling options or they'll generally sell more options than buying options. And it answers partially Roland's question about whether you wanna buy or sell options at the same time. But again, we're not quite there yet. Today, we're just here to cover the basics and the fundamentals. In the next course, we are gonna talk about how can you actually go about combining buying and selling options, or how can you sell options predominantly in your portfolio to gain uh, this theta or time decay advantage. But you know that's for our next course today. We're just gonna talk about what theta actually is. So theta tells you the rate of which the price of the option will change with respect to time. Now time is something that we can't control, meaning time will continue to march on regardless of how whatever whatever we want, right? So theta tells you how much the value of an option will erode by for each day that goes by. So if you're looking at a call option that has a theta of 0 0.03, that's telling you that this option will lose three cents in value per day. So in the net, so in the same example as I spoke here before, let's say BMO is trading at sixty dollars. I think the stock's going to go higher, so I buy a two month sixty dollar call option and I pay five dollars for it. So in the previous example, I showed you if the stock goes from 60 to 61, what the value of the option would be. But like I said, that's keeping everything constant. That's assuming nothing else changes. But let's say the move from 60 to 61 doesn't happen instantaneously. It happens over one week time. So the stock gains 1% over one week. So what we can do is we can now use delta to give us a calculation of how much the value of the option will increase based on delta. So in the, in the previous example, we said it'll move from $5 to $5.50, which is a 10% gain. 
But then what we have to do is we have to factor into, well, yes, we made 50 cents on Delta. How much money did we lose on Theta? In this particular case, I said it took one week. So seven days went by. And if I'm losing three cents a day, in the one week's time, what I've lost is 21 cents in time value. So what I do is I take my new value, $5.50, and I have to subtract 21 cents from that to get the sense for how much is my value, how much is my BMO call option will be worth at the end of the week when the stock goes from 60 to 61. And the answer is you lose 21 cents, so it goes down to $5.29. So my total gain on this particular trade is 5.8% as opposed to the 10% that I was looking at. So if the stock made the $1 move instantaneously, let's say there was an earnings announcement and the stock makes a big move very quickly, then I get a 10% gain. But if it, moves one, if it moves $1 very quickly and then stays there for a whole week, I'm gonna lose an additional 21 cents to time decay. So that's how you can think about the option Greeks. They, they're just different factors that affect the value of your option. Each one of them is, is really only useful if you, um, look at them in a vacuum, but I will say the two most important Greeks are Delta and Theta, because those are the two Greeks that have the largest impact to the value of your option. Yes, volatility has an impact to your option. Yes, gamma has an impact to your option, but they're relatively small changes. So you might have a big move in volatility, but it might only move your, your option value by a few cents versus if the stock moves up by a dollar, you're going to have a very large impact to the value of your option or a very large decrease to the value of your call options if the stock moves higher and if time marches on. So that's why it's important for us to talk about delta and theta. And then we're, what we will cover is some of the other Greeks in other classes as we go forward. But those are the two most important ones, especially so many of you said that you're brand new. I don't want to overwhelm you. Now, and I will also say, this is more, the delta and the theta slides are more for conceptual, for you to understand conceptually what these impacts are. You don't have to do the calculations yourself. Options play does the calculations for you. And I want to show you some real examples here. So what I'll do is I'll use BMO, right? Um, this is a stock that has taken a very big um, move to the downside as all Canadian or all banks globally have taken this big move. So, and the stock moved down to about 56.24, new 52 week low here on this particular stock. So let's say that for argument's sake, you think that this stock may continue moving lower. So in the previous example, I was showing you looking out to May, which is roughly 53 days from expiration, the put option will cost you $6.10, which means that the stock needs to move another six bucks to the downside. So your break even is just below $50. So in order to buy this put option, you have to believe that by May 15th, the stock will be below 50 at expiration. Now, that might be a pretty big move because it's another 10% move to the downside. You might say to yourself, well, this stock moves 10% in a day. So, you know, for it to move to another 10% in the next 50 three days, I think that's possible. Or you can be a contrarian. So you can do anything here. You can use these trades to set up a bullish trade. You can say, well, what happens? How much does a call option trade, right? So you can ask yourself, well, do I think the stock's gonna bounce uh, uh, you know, roughly $6 to buy a call option? So here buying a May $56 call option only costs $5.60. So my break even price is $61.60. So you can ask yourself, do I think the stock's gonna be above 6160 by the May expiration? And you might say, well, this stock you know, was, had a high of 67 just on Friday. So I don't think it's crazy for it to be above 61 by May if you do think that this is a bottom. So either way, these are ways that you can take a bullish or bearish view and you can use our P&L simulator. And this is really where we use that delta and theta concept to say, well, if the stock moves down to $44 by expiration, how much money do you make? And you can even say, well, what happens if it makes that move in the next few days, right? What happens if by April, the end of April, uh, the end of March, 
that the stock is at $44. How much money do you make on this $50, $56 put option? Or what happens if it goes down to 44 and then you hold it all the way to expiration? As you can see, the value of that put option starts to erode. That's the theta that we just showed you. So this time slider shows you how theta affects the value of your option. And this price slider shows you how delta affects the price of your option. So as you can see, if the stock moves higher, the call option starts to make money. If the stock moves lower, the put option starts to make money. And you can use this, this tool to modify this and change it to any strategy that you would like. You can sell the put option. So we can now compare selling a put to selling a call. And you can see how each strategy performs. So as the stock moves higher and higher, notice how there's, there's a limit to how much money I can make. No matter how high the stock goes, the most I can make is the premium that I, that I collect on selling this put option. And that's why you can use this tool to compare selling a put to perhaps buying a call option. You know, that, that I actually think is probably a better uh, combination to say, well, you know, if BMO is trading at $56 and you think that this stock is going to move higher, how much money do you make on each strategy? So as you can see, if you think the stock's gonna make a big move to the upside, right? So let's say you think the stock's gonna bounce back to $80. And you know, in, in this very, very volatile and, and fast changing environment, I think there can be a lot of views out there. I'm not here to say that I think this is a bottom and I think the markets are gonna bounce, but you know, if, if the governments come in, step in and provide a big fiscal, uh, fisc fiscal package, if, we make some headway on some medical um, cures or relief for the virus, perhaps you do get a very quick bounce. And maybe some of you are willing to take a small risk of a few dollars a share to bet that the stock, that the markets will bounce. And as you can see here, if you do get a bounce by let's say uh, mid April, let's, or let's just say towards the end of April, um, notice how if the stock does bounce to $80, sure, you can sell a put option, but guess what? You would only make $593 versus if you bought the call option, you would make triple that, $1,800. And that's why it's when I say when you're bullish, ask yourself, number one, how much do the options cost? And then from that, decide whether you think the markets are going to move that amount or higher. In this particular case, if you're paying $560 for the 560 call, that breaks your break even at 6160. So you have to ask yourself, do I think this market will be above 6160 by expiration? In this particular case, if you think it's gonna go up to $80, that certainly exceeds that 6160. And you can calculate, well, if the stock goes up to 80 by the end of April, well, here I'm making $1,800. Sure, I can sell a put option, I'll still make money, but I'm only making $600. So that's how you can decide for yourself without having to, any doubts as to exactly which strategy is best suited for you using options play. And you can type in any stock. If anyone has any stocks, um, I'll, I'd be happy to take a look at it. Um, if anyone has a particular name, you can, uh, if you have a particular symbol, you can type them into the chat window. I'll take one request here just to show you how easy it is to take a look. So Suncor, um, what's the symbol for Suncor again? SU. Suncor. Is that a is that a Canadian symbol? Uh, yes, Suncor is a U.S. only symbol, is it not? Uh, yes, this is only for Canadian. We're only looking at Canadian symbols here. So let's take a look at BCE. Someone else asked for BCE. So I don't know what your views are on BCE, but if you look at the technical score, it certainly is a very strong stock. But even though it's a strong stock, it has taken a huge beating. It has consolidated quite a bit here now between this 50 and $56 level. So I don't know what your views are. Let's just take a bit of a contrarian view. And let's say you think that this stock, um, you know, and, and this stock is relatively strong because it, it's only gone from about uh, a high of 63 down to 51 when the market is tanked, uh, you know, well, uh, you know, greater than a third of its value here. It sheds, uh, I would say, a little less than a third of its value here. So 
let's say you think that when the market bounces that this is one of the stronger stocks that will recover from there and well actually you know the stock the stock is down at 46.44 um so this has clearly broken this this um i would say consolidation range to the downside so maybe let's say i'm bearish on this particular trade right so Trading at $46, buying a $48 put will cost me $475, which means my break even price is $43.25. This stock has moved 10% to the downside today. So maybe you think further downside is going to continue here. Um, we don't have a lot of price history here. Going back to 46 is, is a really all time low here for this particular stock. So I don't know. Everyone might have different views here. Maybe you think it's going to bounce, but you can use this tool to select both bull, uh, calls and puts. So buying a May $48 call only costs $330. So a break even price of $51.30, which is where it closed on Friday. Maybe you think the stock's going to bounce, but you can use this tool to quickly say, well, if the stock bounces, how much money do I make? Or how, mar how far does the stock need to bounce in order for it to make sense for me to buy this call option? And you can use our P&L simulator to simulate these different views to see how each strategy uh, plays out. Or vice versa, say, well, I think the stock's going to continue moving lower and being able to use this tool to model out how these uh, strategies will work and it's so important, especially for those, of you, for those of you that are beginners, to understand what are your risks and rewards before you get into a trade. Because I see so many newer traders jump into buying put options because they're, you know, whether it's because of the volatility of the markets right now, you, you want to get into the market, you want to try to capture some of this downside. So you go out and buy puts. Next thing you know, the put options that you've purchased requires the stock to make, you know, a 15% move to the downside before they break even. There are so many examples of this. And, and you know, especially in the uh, marijuana space that has really taken a huge hit to the downside. Um, you know, these put options cost so much money in terms of percentage. You know, this only costs $155, but this has a break-even price of $645. That means the stock needs to drop almost another 15% just for you to break even. So $155 sounds cheap, but it's a $7 stock. So these are some of the things that we're going to continue to explore and, and help you guys learn so that when you think about an option, you don't, you don't just think about bullish or bearish, you think about how much am I paying for this call option or how much am I paying for that put option? And do I think the stock is going to make a big enough move for me to make back my money on how I'm paying for this call or put option? So with that, I just wanna thank everyone for taking the time out here this afternoon. I really hope that this was useful in giving you a better understanding of true calls and put options and how you should go about thinking about them because it's so important that you understand this before you go ahead and, and start placing a trade. So again, for those of you that are brand new to options play, uh, I, I, I really recommend that you sign up for these types of tools. Uh, it's completely free of charge to you because the, T, uh, the Montreal Exchange has paid for your access. So take advantage of that. And for those of you that already have access to the tool, you can log in using this link here, which I will also post for you here into the chat window. So with that, like I said, I want to thank you for your time today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a few minutes to answer a few questions here. And I'm going to scroll up here to Roland's question. I'm going to address that first. Please type in your questions and I'll try to answer as many questions I have time for here today. So Roland earlier during the session asked if I own an in the money call option, if I'm long the call option. So Roland has bought a call option and let's, I don't know which call option Roman, uh, Roland owns, but let's say he owns this March uh, $56 call option on BMO, right? So he says he owns an, an, an in the money call option. Can you sell an out of the money call option to reduce his, my price? And that's exactly what we're going to cover in our next, um, options education uh, course, but it's, it's, it's a little bit more advanced than what we're talking about here today. But what Roland's ex is explaining is exactly what we want to teach you is that 
buying that $56 call option costs you $5.60, meaning the stock needs to move $5.60 in order for you to break even. That's 10% of the underlying stock price. That's a big move just to break even. So what can you do? You can reduce the value, the, the, the cost of that trade or reduce the risk and reduce the amount that the stock needs to move by selling some options. You can sell an out of the money call. So you can sell in this particular case, let's say the $68 call collected $1.25. And what that does is it means that you, instead of paying $5.60 for that call option, you're now paying $5.60 minus $1.25. So you're only paying $4.35. So now the stock, in ha in, before it had to move $5.60 to break even, now it only has to move $4.35 to break even. So yes, Roland, that is an absolutely viable strategy. That is something that we trade a lot in our own accounts. So I will explore the vertical spreads with you guys in our next session. Um, if there's no trade on the option, does the delta still get added to the price of the option? So Alan, I'm not sure what you mean by the, if there's no trade on the option. Um, every option has a delta, no matter whether it trades or not. So you, the delta of your option uh, or the delta of an option has nothing to do with whether it trades or not. An option always has a delta. Uh, so yes, this tool is only for Canadian stocks. Uh, let's see. Uh, Laurent, you're very welcome. I'm glad that you learned a lot, even though this might be a beginner um, options topic uh, you know i really find that especially for a lot of experienced options traders you know even for myself we sometimes take the basics for granted um, so it's really good to get a refresher on some of the basics it's really important that we understand them because when we start thinking about complex strategies or we start thinking about other strategies or sometimes the emotions of our trade gets into um, you know, our trading, it's important that we review the fundamentals because when we go back to the fundamentals, a lot of times the decisions are much easier for us to say, should I buy a call option? You look at the price of that call and you say, that's way too expensive. I, I would never buy that. Um, and that makes your decision much easier. So I, I do really think for a lot of beginners, it makes sense to review the fundamentals. So thank you so much, Laurent. Um, Uh, Greg, if you don't mind sending me an email at info at optionsplay.com, I'm happy to help you re-verify your account. So I just sent a link in the chat window. Um, is this talk available to review? Yes, all of, our, all of our educational events are recorded so that you can review at your own pace. It is available on our YouTube channel. You can go to Options Play Canada um, YouTube channel, which I will post uh, a link for you guys. Whoops. Hmm. Sorry. That's what I was looking for. So I'll post the YouTube channel link to everyone in the chat window. We have all of our previously recorded webinars, including part one. For those of you that want to for those of you that want to review part one, you can do it. It's right on the front page of our options play tool. So this is part two. I recommend that you watch part one before you come to our next session on Monday coming up because we're gonna cover everything we went over in part one and part two using some real examples like the BMO example that I used today and give you a little bit more also of a market update, You know, especially in this very volatile trading time. I know a lot of traders are concerned about what to trade, how to trade it, so we will talk about that as well um, given the current context of the market. Uh, Azim, thank you so much. I, I'm really glad that you guys find this helpful. Um, Cheryl, I hope I just answered your question on how to get the part one video. It's right here on the front page of our Options Play channel, of YouTube channel. And if you just click on subscribe when, you are, when you're on the Options Play Canada uh, YouTube channel, then every single time we post a video, you'll automatically get an email alert to let you know that we've posted a new video. So if you ever miss one, I highly recommend that you do that. Um, Wallace is saying, for the April 17th vertical spread, long the 105 put, short the 100 put strike, set up on CIBC, 
When the stock traded at 106 in February, CIBC closed 67. You remember it closed both legs now? Um, if, you're, if you have a put spread that's really far in the money on both legs, yes, I recommend that you close it out. Um, because there's just no, there's no real reason for you to continue holding on to it. You've already made, made your max profit. You know, the only thing that can happen here is the stock maybe moves significantly higher on some really good news and you start to lose, uh, or you start to give up some of your gains. So if you're that far in the money, I recommend that you take profits. When you look at, uh, Eric is asking, when looking to buy options, is there a percentage to the underlying ratio that you determine if an option is expensive or cheap? So Eric, generally speaking, the answer is yes, but you have to also put into the context of the current market volatility. So when, you know, BMO is a stock that normally does not move very much. It's a pretty boring stock that generally trades between 90 and 100, you know, so we're not used to BMO moving 10, uh, you know, 10% a day. This is a stock that normally moves half a percent, a quarter of a percent a day. So, you know, what was very expensive a few weeks ago may not, you might not think is so expensive right now. You know, I, I think a lot of people when BMO is trading in this in the eighties might've said, well, you know, normally a BMO option will cost me a couple of dollars. Now it's costing me six, $7, but guess what? That six, $7 is in theory justifiable because the markets are moving so much. So yes, yes and no. Um, you have to put into the context of what you're actually currently trading or the market that you're currently trading. 10%, I would say, for BMO is a lot to pay. $5.60 for a call option, 10% of the underlying stock price. That is unthinkable two months ago to pay that kind of to pay that type of premiums. But now if you think the stock can continue move to, to move lower, you know. You know, some of the estimates that I'm looking at for bank stocks, you know, they're looking at about at least a 50% decline in earnings per share for 2020. So you could possibly say that, you know, there's a little bit more downside. I will say that, you know, you have pretty big moves to the downside. So I think, you know, if things calm down a little this week, that is pretty expensive. But you, it's, you really have to put it into the context of the market that you're currently trading. And the current market that we're trading is extremely volatile and option premiums are extremely expensive. Um, Boris, I'm not sure which email verification page you're, you're referring to. If you could help me understand that, I'm, I'm happy to answer. Um, Lucy, Cheryl, Raphael, thank you. Option on stocks are the same idea as options on index. Um, so options on stocks are a slightly different than options on index because options on index cannot be exercised. They are all cash settled versus an option on a stock you can take delivery or have to take delivery of the underlying stock. So there's a deliverable on the options. There are no deliverables on the index. Um, Tony, you referred to this earlier. How should one determine if the option is fairly priced or overpriced? I think I just talked about that pretty heavily um, on Raphael's, on, on uh, I'm sorry, on uh, Eric's question here. Um, but usually we take a percentage of the underlying stock price as a quick gauge. So BMO at 560 on a $56 stock, that's 10%. That's really expensive. You know, 10% on a stock that barely budges 10% in a whole month is a lot to, to pay for. But again, in the current market, you might not consider that too expensive. Um, are you sending this presentation by email? Yes, we're sending both the recording and the slides by email. Does the PL simulator take into account the purchase cost when calculating the profit? Yes, Jimmy. The PL calculation already accounts for your purchasing cost. Are these videos on YouTube? Yes, all of them are available on YouTube. Um, we have playlists put together for you. We have a beginner's master course, which is where this one's going to go under. And then we have our whole webinar series for all the other, you know, as you can see, we have 19 other videos for you to take a look at. So again, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on YouTube. That will get you access to the tools here. Uh, Wallace is saying on CNBC, you were recommended on March, March 13th to set up a diagonal call spread. Would you recommend the same diagonal debit call spread on gold using the Canadian version ETF? 
Um, yes, but the, I also made that rec I also made that trade on March 13th. So I don't know that you want to get into that trade now. Um, you know, I actually have an adjustment to that trade to make. I'll be sending that out to our U.S. subscribers for those of you that trade the U.S. stocks. Um, but um, I wouldn't recommend getting into that trade now. Um, so volatility has a large impact now. Volatility has a huge impact right now. Um, you know, not only does it impact on, uh, you know, how expensive options are, it also has a, a um, impact on, on liquidity. So, you know, especially these times, you're better off trading the very liquid names. So XIU, um, <coughs> excuse me, you know, the large, large um, bank stocks, uh, some of the, some of the energy names have taken a huge hit, but in the in Canada at this point, you know it's mostly the banking stocks right now that I would consider still liquid for trading in this market. The prices of options tell us direction that in investors expect. Um, not exactly. The prices of options typically are more backwards looking than they are forwards looking. Um, they do, you know. To some degree, you might say that when put options are really expensive, that means that the market expects that markets uh, that the option that the markets are going to continue moving lower. But again, that doesn't you know that's not always right either. So we tend to find that to be more of a contrarian indicator. So when there's a lot of puts being traded, that usually is the signal of a of a of a relative market bottom. When calls are really expensive, or when people are buying a lot of calls, that tends to be uh, a signal that we are near a market top. So we usually use these as more contrarian than anything else. Um, Azim is asking a great question. So if options are so expensive now, how do you take advantage of them becoming less expensive in one to two months? So the answer is what you want to do and this is, this is a more advanced strategy. This is not for those of you that are brand new, but for a more advanced strategy, let's say you think BMO is going to bounce higher. First of all, what you wanna do is you wanna buy a longer dated option, maybe go out to June. Notice how I can buy a June, uh, unless unfortunately they don't list the uh, strike prices for June. Um, but if I buy a May $56 call option, cost me $5.60, what I can do is I can sell a really short dated option in the short run. Let's say I sell, I don't know, a $60 call option uh, that expires in just one week and I can collect roughly a dollar. So as long as the stock stays below $60 this week, I've offset the cost of my trade by uh, almost 10%. And if this expires worthless, I can sell another, uh, you know, maybe an April 3rd one, uh, maybe at 60, 61, 62, and collect another dollar. And what you can see very quickly is I can reduce the cost of this long call from $5.60 down to maybe 3 or $4 very quickly in just the span of a couple of weeks. And that's really how you take advantage of short-term volatility. Sell that really high elevated short-term volatility to offset the cost of that long-term call or put option that you want to purchase. Uh, when would it make sense to sell slightly in the money options? It almost never makes sense to sell in the money options unless you're just um, selling a straight call. Uh, you know, you might want to sell a put option that's slightly in the money. Um, that's the only time that it might make sense. So if let's say, uh, I think BMO, I think this is the bottom for BMO. I can sell this $56 put or maybe $58 put for $6.90 because I think the stock is going to bounce higher. That's the only time where it makes sense to sell something that's slightly in the money, in my opinion. Can Canadian, can Canadian use this tool for US stocks? So you can't use this tool for, for US stocks. If you wanna sign up for the US version of Options Play, you have to go to Options Play dot com which i just sent a link to everyone here into the chat window so if you trade u.s stocks and you want to follow us for u.s stocks you can sign up for that using optionsplay.com what's the minimum volume you would recommend for liquidity so great question the answer is there's nothing it really isn't based on liquidity it isn't based on volume it's based on the spread of the bid and ask price so usually anything wider than you know i would say a dollar is something that I would usually stay away from unless the premiums are really, really high.
but you also have to factor into the price of the stock. So a stock that's at $7 will obviously have a slightly tighter spread because the value of the option, uh, the value of the stock is so much lower. And then a, a stock that's relatively higher price will naturally have a, a, a wider spread. But usually you have to look at the spread, the bid ask price to determine the liquidity of an option. Just, just, just volume or open interest in my opinion, is not a good way to do so. Um, what is the sequence of videos for the beginner's course? So it's based on part one, part two, part three. We really made it so it's easy for you to understand the sequence. Um, and that's why we made it part one, part two, and part three. Um, I noticed that on some weekly options, there's very low um, volume. So yes, we do notice that on the weekly options and the, and the Canadian options, there are t there tends to be lower um, liquidity than the monthly options. So especially with XIU, I do find that the monthly options uh, have better liquidity, in my opinion, from what I have seen, Mohammed. When looking, uh, Eric, I'm just here to do um, Canadian options here. So if you have a question about, uh, you know, U.S. options, please contact us here on the U.S. versions. On stocks that I believe will recover, is it a good idea to buy options that expire in 2021 and 2022? You are the best, thanks. Thank you, Alan. Um, yes, yeah, so generally speaking, if you are bullish uh, you know, long-term, so let's say you think uh, the market's gonna recover long-term, you might wanna look at buying a 2021. Uh, you can look at relatively far out of the money options. So let's say we look at a 2021, March 2021, if you can buy an $18 call option for just $4.45, which is uh, roughly a 25% premium. So that is expensive, but you're getting a whole year. You know, BMO, we're talking about 10% in just a couple of months or a month and a half. Here, you're paying roughly 25% for a whole year. And then what you can do is you can sell short-term calls against this to continuously chip away at the $4.45. But yes, that would be certainly one way to consider buying, um, you know, this is one of the times where I do advocate that you might want to consider buying slightly in the money because notice how here, if I'll just show you the two side by side. So if I buy the March 18, 445, my break even is 22.45, but the March $16 call that costs a little bit more, $100 more, has a break even price of 21.40. So even though it costs more, my break even price is actually lower. So in this particular case, I would prefer to buy the $16 call option because I'm paying less extrinsic value, which means that if I sell a short dated option against it, let's say I sell the April, I don't know, $20 calls against it, I'm going to collect uh, 38 cents. So I'm going to chip away at roughly, you know, seven, eight percent of this call option in just less than a month. And you can try to keep doing that um, month after month. And actually, just to be a little even better. Notice how here, if you get filled near the midpoint, your your break even here is just twenty dollars and ten cents. So you know that's that's how I like to tr typically trade these leap options is buy something that's slightly in the money because you are going to get a better break even price. Um, how do you access the U.S. version? So I just posted a link before. I'll send it again. It's optionsplay.com. Um, would you consider inviting other guests in the future webinar? So yes, I will. Um, you know, one of the things is I found that I think Tastyworks is about to uh, launch a Canadian version. As soon as they do, I will have Tom Sosnoff on. You know, Tom's a good friend. Uh, you know, I, I really enjoy doing webinars for, with him. Uh, what I love about Tom is that he will answer any question. There's nothing off limits, you know, because he doesn't have any um, hangups on, 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 rec on, you know, pulling up ideas and showing you different strategies. He'll talk about anything and I really love that. So as soon as they launch that Canadian version, I will have him back on. And for those of you that trade US options, unfortunately Tom had to cancel next week because of the coronavirus, but he is with us in, in June. So I will have him on. But we are here to bring in as many experts as possible. And we are doing a digital version of the Options Education Day that we normally host a few times a year on April, I believe 27th is going to be our first digital OED. So we're going to have a few different um, ex ex experts on with me where we're going to do our um, 
theme for that digital education day is going to be uh, live trading. So all of uh, all of us, we're going to uh, pull up the markets using the real um, pricing and show you strategies that we would trade in our portfolio in the context of everything that we're trying to teach here. So there's a lot coming in 2020. You know, these beginner master courses is really designed to give you a better um, educational experience. Uh, doing part one, part two, and then making sure we uh, show you really how to apply them in the real markets before we move on to other um, other um, segments or other educational topics. So we really want to make sure that you have the support of not just the educational events, but also how do you actually uh, implement them in your own portfolio. So that's the changes that we're making in 2020. We're really excited about doing all of this for you guys and we're uh, you know, and any feedback that you guys have, we're always open to to using them to continuously improve our educational format. So again, with that, I just want to thank everyone for taking the time out here this afternoon. I've taken a lot of your time and I just want to make sure that you guys are also staying safe, you know, try to stay home as much as possible. This is a tough time for everyone from an economics perspective from, you know, in the US and Canada and globally. I just hope that we're all doing our part in, in trying to contain the spread of this virus so that we can get back to normal sooner than later. I hope that for those of you that are lucky enough to be able to continue working from home to support those of you that maybe may not have uh, a job at the current moment, supporting the medical staff, whatever they're doing to uh, get them supplies so that they can continue to do their work. So I really hope that everyone stays safe and to your families as well. Uh, and I will see you guys next week on Monday. So have a great evening and see you next week.